Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us once again. It is my great honor, once again, to be your guest host for the evening. And I've got a fantastic guest for today's program, someone uh, I'm sure you already know, uh, someone who is now becoming a household name. Um, I want to talk to him about uh, what he's learned over the last, I think, roughly six months. And so with no further delay, Welcome to tonight's show, this afternoon show, this morning show, Mr. KP Lee. Hi, KP. How's it going? It's been really busy. And again, I I just want to say thank you for doing this. It's, it's not enough that we do this, or we don't do this enough, I should say. It's uh, always great to be catching up and, you know, discussing the um, topics of the day. Yeah, it's no, it's fantastic. Um if if you'll allow me to sort of branch off or go back to a topic that I'm I'm really interested in, and it's it's well it's the media and I understand I know that you've been um, garnering great success doing local broadcasting, and the last time we talked about this that I think was again about six months ago, um, you said that you were reasonably new to the experience and you shared some of your insights for our listeners who might be interested, our viewers and our listeners who might be interested in broadcasting. And I'd actually like to sort of return to that and maybe just sort of ask you for an update. Uh, what have you personally uh, learned or uh, gained over the last six months now that again, hockey season is starting up and you are back in the broadcast booth? No, oh, thanks for the question. Yes, um, yes, I am fairly new to this. Uh, it would be what my third season of doing this, and it's it's been a blast. I would say, um, you know, have covered or have done a hundred games, more than a hundred games now, and I, I drew a little chart, which I think I may have shown you. I've done like, you know, and, and these are like amateur hockey games that primarily take place on. Saturday and Sunday uh, and you know but because of um, playoff games and postpones postponements and rescheduling and things like that um, you know I've basically broadcasted a game every day of the week Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday and I drew it on a little chart as a kind of like a, to acknowledge the achievement because these are you know games that primarily take place on Saturday and Sunday. And um, what have I learned? Well, you can never be prepared enough. That's one thing. And I can just point out like a most recent experience that happened, uh, you know, a week ago, actually. I, you know, showed up at the rink ahead of time, set everything up, went down to the locker rooms of both um, teams, spoke with the coaching staffs of both teams to get the pronunciations of the names so that I can pronounce the names correctly and you don't want to assume. And, you know, um, so I got the pronunciations. I wrote them down in my little um, notebook uh, that I used during the play-by-play. -play. And, of course, when the game started uh, and then when the players were on the ice, you know, making the passes, shooting, and I found myself uh, completely butchering the names of several players on both sides. And I recognized it immediately as soon as the words came out, the, came out of my mouth. And, you know, of course, at that point, you just tell yourself, okay, just say the name again correctly and just apologize for it. And I, I think that's one of the big things still. Uh, and the, ga the game moves very fast. Hockey moves very fast and you have to be alert. Uh, you do want to say the names of uh, the players correctly. Uh, again, it, it just just this past week, uh, I did not do that, uh, do a good enough job of it. And, uh, you know, it's something that is a learning moment, a teachable moment. You just have to perhaps, um, you know, pronounce those names out loud, like uh, before the game, not just have it written down and kind of like process it mentally, maybe actually say it out loud. And I... I um, I was at Nat Bailey Stadium during the summer um, helping out in, uh, you know, with the home games. And I noticed now O'Donohoe, for example, the PA announcer for the Vancouver Canadians Baseball Club, like he he 
you know, does the PA announcing and like public service or, or sorry, public address announcing. And during the course of the game, he has to basically read out names and read out announcements. Um, but before the gates open, I can actually see him in the PA booth actually reading out the script, you know, like preparing. So he's actually like doing that. And, and I, you know, as a play-by-play -play announcer, uh, I guess I need to perhaps kind of do something similar in, in that I read out names um, or kind of like, uh, I guess, pretend that a play is happening before the game where I actually like say those names out loud so I'm familiar with them. And like I said, I literally um, mispronounced like several names on both sides. And that's... You know, <laughs> that that just shows a lack of preparation or not enough preparation. And uh, I do have uh, over the Thanksgiving weekend, I've been asked to broadcast nine separate games um, during a three day span. And mm -hmm. hope you can come on and support us and check check out the games. It's a showcase weekend with all, I guess, all eight teams in the um, division playing at the same rank, like at different times, of course, throughout the three days. So I'm going to get to call the games involving all eight teams. And of course, a lot of the, those names aren't going to be, um, are going to be new to me. So I, I'll need to basically be able to uh, get the pronunciations ahead of time and um, practice them and make sure that I get them right um, on, on the air. And also another thing that uh, maybe I learned um, just realizing that maybe at the amateur level you know remind myself to mention where these players are from right if they're from richmond british columbia or surrey or even like what uh, minor hockey association they you know came from whether it's let's say the you know like the vancouver thunderbirds minor hockey association or you know the south delta minor hockey association maybe reference that um, and I found as well that uh, the last couple of seasons, I, and I prepared little clips that I put on YouTube, and which I've shared with you as well. And <clears throat> it's a it's a great learning moment where you go back and listen to it. And I notice, I notice for other people too, but I notice for myself, I keep repeating the same words uh, at times. So I, I showed you maybe a little chart or maybe a list, and I wrote down, okay, Mike Emmerich, you know, the former play-by-play -play announcer in the NHL he had like I don't know 200 different verbs for the for the word pass and then I said I wrote made a list maybe I should kind of go over those and make the descriptions a little bit more um like of a variety in a way and not just just do the same thing over and over and so basically like you know like that and even like I've kind of thought about as well when announcing the score, don't just always say the score. You can change it up and say, okay, uh, the visitors lead by three. <laughs> or yeah. right, the uh, the visitors have a six goal lead or something, right? <laughs> Not just say it's eight to two, like repeatedly. Um, well, one other thing as well is to, because I'm also in charge of updating the score bug, because, you know, nowadays every broadcast has a score bug. This happened again last week where I, forgot to update uh, the period change. I had the period as the second period. I didn't change it, even though it was already the third period. And uh, there was also last week as well, the visiting team was leading four to two, but I forgot to update the fourth goal. So for a long time, it's still read three, two on the score box, but I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at the monitor. I'm looking at the ice. I'm looking at the, right. the action on the ice. So a lot of things, right? Not just like names, but also like changing up the words that I'm using. Talking about, let's like, say, you know, where the players are from, what teams they came from, um, like updating the score buck, <laughs> a lot of different things. And these are basic things, of course, right? And I'll add, even add one more thing. It's like mentioning, of course, um, the players, um, the, like um, height and weight information. But you'll know, find a way to throw that in. Um, so, so those are obviously um, things. And one of the other comments I'll make is that um, every Thursday now I'm doing um, camera work for another, a different local minor hockey 
um, team, and I got to listen to the play-by-play -play guys do like the broadcasting. So I think it's it's a great opportunity to continue to learn and pick up things that I that I can hear, like you know, in, in person. Right. No, act, actually, that's fantastic. You reminded me of a couple of things. Uh, first thing is I'm going to take myself way back to when I started in, in media. This is talking about print and radio. Um, the uh, post-event uh, or post-show meetings that we had, we, I still think they might be called post-mortems. I don't know. Uh, but the, um, the idea with uh, post-mortem was to dissect the uh, performance. Uh, for any given day or any given week. And you would sit with your colleagues and break up the production into roughly three categories. What went exceptionally well? And you put that in the category of, okay, we need to do or I need to do much more of that. Uh, things that went horribly wrong, and hopefully there aren't that many uh, issues or elements that land in that category, but anything that could maybe take improvement would land in that category. And then you'd have this third category of, well, I didn't realize that was going on when I was on air. I didn't actually realize that that's what I was doing when I was writing or, or submitting a story. And then you'd have that, that uh, issue or element that would be a constitute a blind spot that you'd be made aware of. And then the mission became to figure out whether you could somehow use it in a productive way or, or whether it was something that needed to disappear. So that was the old uh, post-mortem uh, post-production meetings. Uh, sounds like you're actually kind of doing that, but all by yourself. Uh, right. I, I'll get back to that issue in a, in a second, but if, if you, you can sort of work with somebody who's uh, doing a, a very similar thing, that actually, I, I've always found that to be incredibly productive. And you, you're always, or at least I found myself always learning. There are always things that come up that are either, again, terrific, positive, great, or, you know, gee, you know, might want to get rid of that or might want to uh, do something to bury that, uh, whatever it is that's causing that problem. Yeah, I'm really interested in the games. And, and hopefully there are people out in our uh, audience who also would be interested in, you said there's a three-day period, and could you be uh, exact about the dates, uh, either mention a website or maybe a venue, something that could maybe... Uh, help someone who wanted to go to one of the games show up. And if I'm into the only day that I won't be around at all is the 14th. Right. Well, um, I'll answer that right now. Uh, so this will be Friday, October 11th, Saturday, October 12th, and Sunday, October 13th. This is going to be at the Richmond Olympic Oval at the, well, it's in Richmond, British Columbia, Canada, of course. Uh, there is a Friday night game, Friday the 11th of October. Uh, that's There's only one game scheduled. It's uh, in the evening. Um, I believe it's like at six, 5 or 6 p.m. I'll have to post it afterwards, but it's an evening game. And then Saturday, the first game, I believe, started at 10 o'clock in the morning. So there are like a number of games like back to back to back to back. And on Sunday, the 13th, the first game begins at 8 a.m., so I have to be there early, 8 a.m. And again, a number of games like back to back to back to back to back. Wow. Total of nine games, basically. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's you know gonna be two long days on Saturday and Sunday. And uh it's you know, it's at the Richmond Olympic Oval, which yeah, it's a facility that has many events going on every weekend, basketball at the other end. Um Bigger skating, ice skating with the for the kids, and you know, there's a gym upstairs. Uh, so come check out the uh, hockey rink. It's the north rink at the Richmond Olympic Oval. So Friday, October 11th, Saturday, October 12th, and Sunday the 13th. That would be um, you know, just before the Canadian Thanksgiving Monday. All right. So. Yeah, well, that is fantastic, and hopefully that information or, or a link to maybe. Um, the venue or the site um, could accompany this podcast, at least. I know we're on YouTube now, so maybe at least on YouTube if, any, if anybody wants to check it out. No, that is fantastic. I'm going to try and pencil in some of the evening. That would that would be terrific. Um, where do you think you... It's, here's one question I remember my mentors always asking. Where do you think you're, you're really beginning to improve? 
What do you think is your strength? As oh, a broadcast. Oh, geez. I, I think um, just, just knowing um, I, 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 that's a hard question for me to uh, critique myself in that way. I, I think that, yeah, you're right. There are always, you know, things to improve and learn. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you things that maybe in addition to what I said previously, things where I could be better. Um, you know, I've always thought that I'm good at math. You know, it's math is pretty basic. But as you know, the clock in hockey in North America, anyway, the clock is counting down. So it does take me a while to figure out, okay, um, there is 15, 13 remaining in the period. So how many minutes into the period is it? Is it like four minutes and... 33 seconds in or what is it so uh, I, I would say okay that still trips me up and I don't know how others do it but I can tell you that preparation is maybe like um, one aspect of preparation is what I'm good at I would say so I actually prepare a um, I use a, a google spreadsheet to come up with let's say the time remaining in the period and then what is the equivalent of you know, the time into the period. I mean, that's pretty elementary for a lot of people, I guess. And I thought it would be elementary for me, but when the game is happening, I have to think about it. Sometimes I I, I stumble, but I actually prepare like a, a chart and I print it out and laminated it. And sometimes I bring it with me. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I look at it and other times I don't. But again, if, you know, there's 15, 13 remaining on the clock, you have to know that it's four minutes and... 47 seconds into the period that kind of thing right uh, so i find myself re constantly re repeating like the time remaining instead of the time into so when the goal is scored uh, right. so it's uh yeah and, and of course at this level at this level you don't get up to the minute um updates on any website so you have to basically rely on your yourself and trust yourself now right. Another aspect where I'll say that maybe I'm not uh, good at, which I can improve on, is knowing what's going on the, on the ice. So, for example, many times a penalty has been called, but if I'm looking in a, in a different direction, I miss, you know, a signal from the, the uh, referee. Then you know, and then at most of the games, there is no PA announcer, no public address announcer. So. You know, you ha I have to be able to pay attention to the signals from the referee as far as what penalty has been assessed. Otherwise, I'll just keep referring to it as a minor penalty. Um, yeah. There's no PA announcer most of the time. And like I said, there's no up to the minute, up to the second update on the website of the league and stuff like that. Uh, so you're kind of on your own. But uh, one thing that I guess I'm good at, I say like preparing beforehand like writing out like the stats um and having that in front of me or uh, awards that somebody had won uh, like previous like previous month or previous season and whatever i have it written down and i can basically say it when you know the relevant player is making a good play or i have it memorized in some way right but just not the pronunciations of some of the names that are that are unfamiliar that i'm unfamiliar with but i do prepare like like for a game on Sunday or a game on Saturday, maybe by Monday or Tuesday, I already have the information, like the lineups written out, um, you know, and uh, so I, I think that part of it I'm good at. Uh, and, and like I said, just improving on the pronunciations and um, the time remaining versus the time into the period. Um, that that I think again, I thought I've always thought I'm good at math, but. Uh, when you gotta when I gotta go do it uh, again I don't know how others are able to do it maybe they have a similar chart or maybe they just know they can calculate would you be able to do it if, if it were you well you're, you're taking again I'm going back to the old newsroom it it sounds like you're missing a producer yeah. right if, if, you, if you had someone in, in the booth to uh, not to do the broadcasting or not to do the, the on air but somebody who was maybe re recording, uh, the time they could slip you a note if you happen to miss a call 
uh, the, the producer might be the person that you could ask to go down to uh, ice level and, and maybe ask a coach about what the call was, this kind of thing. Yeah. So it sounds like yeah, you're go this is going beyond multitasking, which I, I think is good, uh, but it's also, wow, that means you're incredibly busy. Oh, uh, well, I, I mean, I go, I, I, this, I'm sure this is true. I'm pretty sure this is true for minor hockey or minor league sports, baseball, whatever. You do show up early uh, and to set up the equipment. There's no, um, there's nobody really to help you. Like, so I get there to, you know, get the computer in and set up the computer connected to the internet, contact the um, streaming service, the, the company that streams the games, make sure everything is ready, do a mic check, um, make sure everything's connected properly, make sure that uh, the camera person has the, um, the items that he needs to um, do the work. Uh, so yeah, I, I have, have to be there like, uh, or I get there a bit early to set up the things, make sure everything's working. And sometimes, I, I mean, the, the facility is great, uh, but sometimes, like I said, there are many events happening in the, um, in the building. And uh, like there was basketball last week, back to last week, there was basketball, like a big tournament or something going on. And they had to remove the, um, the stands uh, from the hockey ring and move it, move them to the basketball uh, court. Ooh. So the, the broadcast area that I usually am at got moved because it's in the stands and it got moved. And then I had to set up at a, like a, at a different angle from a different angle. Uh, so, and, you know, all these little things, but yeah, it, it's, it's you're on your own. <laughs> there are times when there are times when uh, there are players that you know whose numbers are not on the the roster that you that I wrote out, and then I, I never got any information about that from anybody. And then I might send a text message to um, and then there's a I guess a team uses an app called Team Snap as an app to keep track, and so I just post a little message in there hoping someone would answer me right and uh and say oh hey by the way who's number 25 who's number six i don't have these players on my list for example that's for let's say my team if it's for the other team <laughs> uh i would just it, it, and and it, it's happened before where i um i email you know somebody from the opposing team ahead of time days ahead of time for like an updated roster and then i don't get one i just rely on the information that's posted on the league website but that may not be current and then if like i said if i had to set up equipment and i don't have time to run downstairs to the locker room ahead of time because you know there are weeks where or there are days where equipment well there's just things to do to set up like uh, maybe there's uh, some technical issue and whatnot i may not have time to run downstairs to talk to the opposing coach and uh, or maybe the opposing coach is not available to talk at the time but whatever the case is sometimes i might have to improvise and say that you know number 25 for so and so team is on the ice we don't have a uh, name for this player but we'll we'll try to get that information um you know when when possible sometimes it's it's unavoidable because uh yeah i cannot run down run down to talk to the coach when the game is on and uh my uh my broadcast area is diff is like across the ice from uh the scorekeeper and timekeeper and all those uh and all those um you know staff members support staff members and uh yeah it's uh it, you know it, you know it 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 may not impede what we're doing, but um, we try to. I try to get you know give the correct uh, description as as much as I can, uh, given the situ given the circumstances. And obviously, as I said earlier, if I miss a play, if I miss like the call from the official, uh, I just have to look at the clock and say it's it's a minor penalty, which most of them are, and just. You know, uh, there, there's no replay. <laughs> there's no replay at this level on the video, right? It's uh, just 
but I think it, it, it keeps you on your toes and uh, it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah, it, again, it's taking me back to some of my very, very early days. So it's reminding me of how, yeah, there's a lot of technological change out in the world and a, and a lot of media has has changed. And, and yet certain practices uh, remain r remain unchanged. So, uh, yeah, you are, uh, again, I, I, th I think it's great that you're doing all of these things. This is beyond multitasking. And maybe that sort of, is a reaction based on this is kind of what I experienced at least early many many years ago early on in my media career and it was yeah li literally doing uh everything from setting up the equipment to doing whatever you needed to to do to produce the show um and the show and then in my case it was taking back the content and making sure that it was edited so uh yeah wow this is taking me back to I knew somebody he's passed away but who worked in early television and he was telling me uh, stories about um, how over the course of a weekend um, he probably would get six or seven hours sleep because on a Friday night he had to do uh, a late night program on Saturday morning. It was the kids show on Saturday afternoon. It was an informational program, uh, news Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon. So it was, again, taking on a number of personas, doing a number of things, uh, setting up uh, equipment in addition to, to doing what the, the show actually asked him to do. So, wow. Uh, this is, I hope that people who are interested in getting into the media are listening very carefully to what you're saying, because you're, you're giving us a really good insight into how, on the one hand, things have changed, but on the other hand, how they've remained static, how, how they, ha how they haven't changed. So doing all of those things, um, maybe it's a going back to the question, I'm not sure, but n which one of those kinds of tasks, setting up the equipment, uh, doing the commentary, doing post-production, where do you think your skill really is? That, that generally the answer to that question <laughs> dictates, uh, dictates uh, where, you, where you go in media. I mean, I don't think I'm a technical person. If you show me how to <laughs> plug it, plug in things and stuff like that, um, I do my best. But if there's a problem, I'll probably have to call for help, call for support. I'm, I I wouldn't know how to troubleshoot things. And uh, in fact, you know, there have been you know many examples of uh, this happening. You know, in in the three years or in the two seasons plus now where you know, there's something wrong that needed to be trouble like we need to troubleshoot something and i've had to contact you know somebody else for that and you know, they know exactly what the problem is they'll say okay you need to plug in this thing over here instead of there you need to like do this click this do that they know what's going on i wouldn't know uh and out of all those tasks i mean even video editing we don't need that for this particular position uh the only the, the video editing that i do like the thing the clips i pose on youtube that's for myself <laughs> that's that's for me to uh I'll, that's those are things i upload onto my own youtube channel and so i can go back and listen to them and well i mean as much as i can so i would say the most fun, the most interesting, or the one that I'm, I guess, best at out of all these would be the play by play. But again, there's still a lot to learn. And I mean, I see this as I, I don't, I guess, like, uh, is there such a thing as a, a paid hobby? <laughs> it's, you know, I, I think it's something that I would say that a lot of uh, people do in their own living room a anyway, right? I, I don't know. You you do that. I, I think I may have said this to you six months ago, or whatever. Like, hey, I think I can do this. I I don't know if uh, if everyone else feels that way. Maybe they rather be playing. Uh, I think I I'm fine with doing the descriptions and following. It, it's it's like getting paid to watch a game. I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I guess it count a paid hobby or. It, it, yeah, I I would say out of those, I'm not I'm not a technical person, so 
I guess the play by play is uh, what I like most and and what uh, I think I'm best at out of these skills or out of these tasks that you mentioned. Yeah, well, that that's the skill that you're probably going to perfect as you get more and more experience. But no, you're right. Something that you said, well, you've seen me at the ballpark before, so I, I will occasionally uh, yell a few things at the players. And that, that I do realize, you know, that doesn't make me a, a, a commentator or, or a broadcaster. But yeah, somebody recently told me that anyone sitting in front of a screen watching uh, Netflix uh, is convinced that he or she can be a movie critic. And I go, yeah, I think there is a lot to that mentality. Uh, if you even for a second maybe entertained that idea, if you at any point before you got into broadcasting said, that, that's really going to be an easy thing to do. Uh, how much have you learned through your experience now that lets you, you know, say to other people, it may not be as easy as it looks. I think the key to really good broadcasting, by the way, is making it look it's it's making it seem that anybody could do it, but it, it's actually in terms of the, the 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 skill and the work that goes into creating it. Uh, it's actually the opposite. Not anybody could do it. In fact, most people probably couldn't do it. You have to have the enthusiasm, the energy level that you know that you want to make the game uh, entertaining and informative or a combination of those but you have to bring energy and you have to be passionate and one thing that needs to be said is you know these are uh, minor hockey games and parents actually pay like, a fee to stream these games these are not for free <laughs> i cannot just download or upload those games uh i'll be in trouble for that obviously but these parents pay a lot of money to uh to actually you know, watch these games and then they want, well, they, I, would, I guess they expect you to be um, uh, responsible in, in, in what you say. And, and this is not like being in a bar room or like a, in a pub or something talking sports, right? You have to make sure that uh, you're, you're not saying anything controversial for, for one thing, right? I would never do anything like that on air. Uh, right. You have to be respectful um, to both teams. And I think I think the one thing that is difficult for me is to be a homer. <laughs> I'm not a homer, <laughs> uh, so that's maybe one area where I might have to um, kind of think about. Because I'm, if you've ever listened to my calls, I am absolutely not a homer, and I will. I do not criticize any player on either side. I know I mentioned to you before, and we can check the archives. I mentioned like there's a broadcaster that I respect, Steve Erickson. He um he has many years of experience as a broadcaster and as a referee in, in hockey, and he was criticizing a player on his team, right, for taking too many penalties, even though that player had broken like a team record for most goals in the season. I think breaking Brandon right. Gallagher's um record yep. when Gallagher played for that team. So I was right there tr trying to get an interview with him during intermissions. And like I literally heard him. Well, actually, no, I interviewed with him and he, he it was on video where he specifically told me that, uh, you know, he did not like the way that this player on his own team was taking penalties too much. He's going to cost the team games uh he's got he's gonna hurt his team even though this player is like uh, has broken the team record the franchise record for goals in the season uh so that's something where you know i might well i don't think i would do that uh, and you know nothing wrong with him doing it it's just not my style so i'm very mindful of that that i you know i don't see a need for myself personally to criticize uh, any player because uh, I can't lace up a pair of skates and do what they're doing out there. Um, but I, tr I try to be fair and try to be enthusiastic. I think that uh, you can hear it in my, uh, in the way I sound during the broadcasts for sure. Uh, but it's not, like you said, it's not, it's not um, easy 
and not everybody can do it. Like I can imagine, I can imagine like any parent who tries to get on how biased uh, the parent might be because that's their kid on the ice. And, and you know, it'll be something like, well, why wasn't the penalty called there? What's wrong with the referee? I would not do that, but I can picture like parents might do that if they were able to like, if you put a, put a mic in front of them, So uh, it, it, yeah, definitely not easy, especially when you have a rooting interest. Well, I guess I have a rooting interest too, but I don't show it um, enough, if at all. Right? Of course, if, of course, if my team scores in overtime, of course I'm gonna be more excited. But uh, you know, I, I, you have to be right. <laughs> but but that. Mm -hmm. But the but but the, I'll say the language won't be colorful, but the but the emotion will probably come out. So I know I think that's actually a really um, great point that you're making, it, and I think it actually takes a talent to be able to separate uh, journalism from um, the editorial work that another department would be, would do. And I think the, the lines have been uh, incredibly blurred. Uh, in recent years to to the point that, I, and again, this is not only sports, but um, any kind of journalism uh, to, to the point that it becomes uh, very difficult to distinguish the editorial from the the actual content, the, the news content, the sports content, the game content. Um, now, are, are you able to do that? Because uh, I'll take it back to something that you said just a, a minute ago, that you're, you find it hard to be a homer. And is is that the secret to your success? Uh, and by that, what I mean is, is that what is enabling uh, the good journalism to come out as opposed to the the editorializing? The fact, and, and by the way, why is it difficult to be a homer? I I try not to be a homer because uh, I'll give you a, a good example. It was again last week. <laughs> Everything that I'm talking about happened last week. Um, So as I was saying last week at the games, the the facility that we're playing at, the Richmond Olympic Oval, uh, they had to move the seating area to accommodate the basketball tournament event uh, in the next in, in the other side of the building. So I was um, broadcasting from one end of um, the rink, and the parents from Kelowna, they made a trip. to support their team playing against the Richmond team. So there were there was one particular um Kelowna family sitting like near me. Of course, I would say that they might get offended if I was against th th their team, right? So you have to always be mindful of that. Uh and you just want to be fair, right? And they scored the first three goals of the game in the first three minutes and nine seconds. And I was not like, I was just like, you know, not cheering for the opposition, but I credited them where credit was due, right? right? And I'm sure that the parents or the family sitting right there appreciated that, right? I said I said something to the fact because uh, that uh, the father who was sitting like around near me, he actually started blaring his horn after the first three goals. And I was making a comment like uh, it's great to have a uh, atmosphere like that, where even like the visiting family members are at the game to cheer on their team. And we already heard, you know, three horns celebrating their goals. Maybe we might hear a few more this game. I said that, <laughs> right? I wasn't right. saying something like, oh, the bad guys are on the scoreboard. I would not say that, right? I, there's no such thing as good guys and bad guys. I would never say that. Like, right. like parents... On both teams, pay to watch. Uh, you know, I would never ever disrespect either team in any way. I'm not gonna, you know, how in broadcasts, uh, announcers will say the good guys, the bad guys, or something like that. It's you know, being a homer. I I just find it hard to do that, and because I know there are family members um, of the other side. either in attendance or listening. <laughs> right? And I even said that I mean, we um, we might hear a lot more horns, you know, in, in this game. 
I'm talking about the opposition. And then the parent, the father, later told me like he's not going to blare any more horns, not to rub it in because they they ended up winning the game by a, a large margin. Uh, but, uh, you know, even when the team, your, your team is down by a lot of goals, you still have to keep up the energy level and still continue to to do it, right? It's not just like the good times, you're excited, you know, when the, during the bad times, you must still perform. And uh, I, I and I, I I can go back to before I started doing the play by play. I was doing camera work, and like I like the play by play announcer was saying something. I forgot what he said exactly, but then I can hear parents from the opposite from the opposing team like saying something sarcastically about the broadcaster. Like, what about our? guys huh like something like because i again i don't remember the comment the broadcast made but i can hear like the parents of the visiting team a little bit annoyed and saying something sarcastic i, I can hear that <laughs> so right. it's 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 just you you know you want to you don't want to offend anybody is is what i would say and i i think i am careful about that and if i do if i do um realize that i'm saying something that I shouldn't say, I like um then I will be mindful of that. But is it hard to be a homer? Uh, it's just that again, uh I know that there are two teams playing um paid by, by one team, but still it's uh you wanna be respectful to everybody. Yeah, no, I, I actually I, I think that's that's really good. That's probably or well, I don't know, probably, but possibly going to give you a, a a really good and solid identity in in the local broadcast community because i i think that is uh working in a fundamentally different way a, a way that might have been much more common um in a different time but because it's now uh new all over again i i actually think that might might give you a, a certain advantage so I, i'm gonna say Let's see what you know happens and evolves with that way of of delivering your uh, commentary. I think that's fantastic. Have, have people noticed? Have you ever been approached? And I, I'm not talking necessarily about uh, a fan, but as a player, a coach, another broadcaster, anyone, after listening to the way that you uh, call a game, noticed uh, anything about how you do it and how uh, objective and unbiased you are. I don't think I've heard anything like in that regard, but I did have a parent tell me like um, after sitting for the whole game near me, because like we broadcast from the stands, right? Uh, so I had somebody come up and a parent, a parent come in and tell me that I, I should be doing this for the conducts. And I, th I thanked him for that, but no, I'm not at that level. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm doing this at the amateur level for the at the minor hockey level, and I think that I'm happy with uh, with 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 that. I mean, I don't. For one thing, I I like I said, it's a paid hobby <laughs> for me. Uh, yeah. Not that I'm not that I'm not ambitious or anything, but I'm I'm like I am realistic, and I know my abilities. I know, um, you know, opportunities like this you have to be willing to travel or, or not travel, but relocate. And uh, I'm happy with where I am and got other things going on in life. Uh, I, I don't like to wear a suit, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> um, you know, but, but uh, a lot of broadcasters, they do dress up. Uh, I'm just wearing, well, this year I've been wearing just the team's um, logo on my uh, shirts. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess, content with uh, doing what I'm doing at this level. And uh, it's just a matter of like not wanting to relocate or anything like that. Uh, I, I guess I'm happy with where I'm at. I mean, that's fantastic. But the, the opportunity may come to you. You, you actually never know. I, the comment about the suit, I, that was an aside, but I'll, I'll sort of pick up on it. Uh, every time, and I'm, I'm going back you know, decades uh, th that I went out of my way to put on, I've got a number of suits, you know, the best suit, you look as great as you possibly can. You show up to an interview or to an event. Uh, 
there's been a, a really stark correlation with my appearance in a suit and a uh, failure to achieve anything that I was trying to get. So I kind of, and there, there was a time when I just sort of went, well, you know, what's the point in dressing up? And, and actually wound up, we can say this, the details of this for maybe a different, a different episode, um, look, looking like I'd been camping for six weeks in an old t-shirt. Cause frankly, there was a time when I just kind of realized, well, you know, that didn't help. This didn't help. Uh, just, I'll just show up and see what happens. Um, and I actually got what I was, you know, going for. So, and somebody at a certain point kind of said, well, I think the secret to that success there was you just sort of gave off this vibe. Like you really didn't care what was going to happen. And I remember telling someone that wasn't a vibe. I really honestly didn't care what was going to happen. So that somehow worked out in a very favorable way. So maybe the fact that you don't wear a suit, that could be a key to success. I'm not, you know, no guarantee, but you never know. You never know. Uh, you you want to be comfortable. You want to be comfortable with what you're doing, like uh, and you know, I guess the way you dress, um, you know, can can make you comfortable or not. So it depends on the uh, you know the the job that you're doing, the the task that you're doing, and uh, I I think that I'm I'm fine with uh, with not wearing one for sure. And uh, yeah, it's uh, again just a preference, a, a choice. It, it is a choice, but it also could be indicating that what if if people are watching you and listening to you and taking in your broadcasting and following the work that you do, it, it will start clicking that maybe what you are projecting is substance over style rather than rather than the other way around. I, I should I shouldn't say though, like on the broadcast, you you don't see me. <laughs> the camera is never pointing at me. Um, right. you know, they're pointing at the, uh, the action at the benches. So it's never on me and, uh, I'm fine with that. Of course, um, yeah, I could, I could take selfies of myself and post them for sure. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, there, there were times when I was, um, going from school to the rink and, you know, when I was at school, I might be wearing like a Doug Flutie Jersey and then I, didn't have time to go change, go home and change. And I show up the rink in my Doug Flutie jersey. Although at least it's red, it's, it's, a, it's a team cult, team's colors. So I, you know, there were times when I just wore that and then, you know, wear like the actual team's like logo on my shirt. Uh, but that's, but uh, yeah, like dressing up, I know that some employers like prefer that. They, they say, they actually say, oh, I would prefer if you guys wore this and this. Like I was working in a marketing, uh, uh, sorry, an advertising company before, and then the manager was very specific. Look, you are in your first week, your first month. For the first month, I would like you to wear a, sh a suit, a shirt and tie like, every day. The others who have been here, they can wear whatever they want because they are proven. So you, for the first month, I would like to see nothing but a suit, a shirt and tie, and I complied. And yeah. There was a teaching job like um, recently, and the the manager said, "Well, some of the parents are saying that you know they're expecting you to be wearing a suit." I'm saying like, "Well, I'm not Stephen A. Smith. I'm not on television. Like, well, what's this about a suit? Like, it's summertime. I'm in a classroom that has no windows that open. Uh, I, I'm not gonna wear a suit and." You can let the parents know that, um, you know, in, well, I'll, I'll just say like in the type of um, classroom atmosphere that we have here, like a suit is not seen as normal <laughs> for, for the, type of the types of classes that we run. I right. accept that, right? I'm not going to wear a suit because the parents think that I should be wearing a suit. Um, like, like I said, I said, I'm not Stephen A. Smith. Right. I'm not on television. And I even showed the manager a clip of uh, Clay Travis on his uh, podcast. Like he's wearing a t-shirt. Like Clay Travis was wearing a t-shirt doing his podcast. And he's, you know, a professional. Uh, and I showed a video of this saying, look at this. <laughs> you know, um, what's this about a suit? I don't understand that, right? Not to be argumentative, but I was trying to 
communicate my point of view and you know um it just it was just odd to me in that situation that people expected you to be dressed a certain way but um you know it, it, every every position is different and like i said um, i'm quite happy with uh just wearing the team's logo and i, I have like you know obviously like multiple shirts not the same shirt i'm wearing every time Right. Wow. No, actually, it's fascinating. Keep it. I want to ask you one last question. When we return to this topic, and, and I know we will, I want to open up a, a different issue. And that, that's the issue of what it is. Now, you, uh, when we uh, talked about this last time, uh, mentioned uh, or, or spoke about um, uh, skills issues that somebody breaking into the broadcasting uh, world uh, would need to know. Um, in, in, in other words, sort of giving advice the way that a mentor would. And I, I would like to focus, again, this is going to be a little bit later on, uh, on what, in addition to what we've already discussed in the past, you would, if you had the opportunity sitting down now, tell someone who is interested in doing what you're doing. What, what would you communicate what additional knowledge would you want to pass along now hold that thought because i'm just floating it because i i, I think that's going to take um uh, more than a couple of minutes uh to deal with so that may be for hopefully uh an upcoming uh podcast in the very near future the question i wanted to ask was something that you you sort of touched on it was well it came up again in, in the context of wearing a suit but you were talking about the classroom, the classroom, the suit, which again, that one I don't understand, but the classroom and uh, communication has the work that you have been doing now for several years uh, as a broadcaster helped you in any way as a communicator in the classroom? I would say they're completely different um, because in a classroom, um, you have to basically slow down and um, stop what you're doing at times to, you know, redirect the attention, uh, people's attention to what we're doing. You, you may have to keep repeating things or you may have to like change your tone and how you deal with the class. It's completely different. Um, I would say uh, at the rink, I would say you're supposed to be more, like joyful and <laughs> bring more joy in, in a sense. I, I could be doing better at that, but it, there, it should be more fun and more joy at the rink as opposed to in the classroom. Like I like to have fun in the classroom and I have had that before, but again, uh, we're, you know, we're not doing kindergarten classes. <laughs> Sometimes you, you have to kind of like be a bit, bit more serious um, and in dealing with the class, but they're they're not the same thing being at the rink and being at uh in a classroom you, you're wearing different hats so to speak so i don't know that it has helped me either way like one has helped in the other and, and i think that uh you know with the broadcasting i don't have like a play-by-play -play partner or a color commentator so there's nobody to interrupt me unless someone tries to get my attention which has happened before but uh there's nobody to interrupt me and I can just basically talk continuously. Um, and in the classroom, well, you, you have to have some downtime from talking. If you keep talking, the students will tune out. <laughs> Maybe they tune out anyway, some in, in uh, some cases, right? Uh, it's, it's a totally different, uh, different way to approach things uh, in, in different, in both, in both roles wow. I, I will i will say that um you know it's it, it does help that you know you, it, it's the same in terms of both positions where you go in having prepared for the task so for a class obviously you have to be prepared before starting the class i know that there are teachers who don't they just they just like wing it as they call it during the lesson, which uh, I know people yeah. that do that. That's not me. Uh, yeah. I am prepared before going in, just like I'm prepared 
uh, as much as I can. Sometimes it's you don't have enough time for that. That uh, like like the Thanksgiving weekend I was talking about would be a, a big challenge where I have nine games and I I know I won't have time to like prepare enough for all the games because uh, of the because of the uh, the how the games are slotted or slated back to back to back to back. It's uh yeah, you won't get a chance to talk to the coaches or all the coaches before every game. So it's it's um uh, it's a challenge, but at least you know that going in that just be mentally prepared, um be as prepared as possible. No, actually it's that's really interesting. Yeah, I guess Aside those teachers who go in and, as you said, wing it, yeah, you can really tell. You can really tell that they're unprepared. Um, again, I don't. That's that's not the way that I uh, would conduct a class. Uh, you don't literally prepare for every word that you're going to say, but you have a plan, you have direction, you have a strategy. Uh, no, that was actually a very interesting answer. So there's going to be a lot to talk about in the future. Uh, let, let, let's just throw in. And I'm not talking about sports broadcasting. I'm thinking back to my days as news director and news reporter when I was at TJIV. One of the things that I think helped me in, in terms of getting a skill and being able to transfer it into uh, the work that I do as an instructor um, came when I kind of realized that, or at least the, what I'd created was a vision of my position between audience and event. And I, I was standing in the middle. In, in, in other words, as a reporter, I, I saw what was happening on one side, and I had to communicate that to uh, an audience that I had to assume was in no way able to see what was happening. So as kind of a mediator, I had to really focus on um, the idea that communication was not just the talking part, it was, it was also the listening part. So I, I developed more of a sense of what was going on. So in, in, in other words, paying more attention to detail. And that really helps in the classroom, or at least for me, it, it really helps. I, I can sit in a, in a room and after a while begin to sort of realize, oh, yeah, that student is maybe tuning out but doing this. This other student, oh, I know what he's actually doing, and he thinks, he thinks he's fooling me by doing what, what he thinks is showing me that he's studying and, and wide awake and, and paying attention. I know he's not. And I'll, I'll sort of go on and on and on. Um, some student actually had that, not that observation, but an observation come back from a student, a former student now. And it was like, you, he said to me literally, he said, you knew exactly what I was doing most of the time, but I thought I was hiding it so well. And my comment back to him was, no, I, if you thought you were hiding it so well, and if you think still that you were hiding it so well, you weren't. Uh, so anyway, that's a different topic. That's a different topic. But I did over the course of uh, doing both the media work and the, work in the classroom, uh, so, sort of realized, in, at least in my case, that there were certain skills that kind of went in, uh, you know, from one direction to the other direction. So I can, I can kind of, if I would ever go back full time uh, into media work, I could certainly take things in the classroom and say, boy, that works well and it would work well. Anyway, that's, that's fascinating, KP. That was fantastic. So I threw out a couple of things that I want to come back to and talk about later. But um, to open up those topics now would be carrying us way down a different path. So I want to say, KP, this has been absolutely fascinating. Um, this is really a very highly informative podcast. So as you develop and as we both continue to grow and learn in uh, our uh, professions that I think overlap and have so much in common, there's going to be a lot to talk about in the future. So I hope I can come back. And in That's the meantime, great. thank you. In the meantime, I, I want to thank um, our audience for listening. Thank you so much. Without you, this would not be possible. Without KP, this would not be possible. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to be the guest host. I'm looking forward to returning in the very near future. In the meantime, everyone, thank you so much. I will now turn over this podcast to its rightful host, Mr. KP Wee. Well, your host today was Stan Markotich, a former news director at CJIV Radio. Again, that's Stan Markotich doing the hosting duties in this episode. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone, and we will see you again next time.